smartportalive.com here for today's tech tip. Today we're going to be talking about camera settings. Now these are camera settings that you're going to be using when shooting homes for listings, but they're very, very basic. This isn't advanced. If you want advanced, there's plenty of other tutorials and other things on the internet and in bookstores and whatnot that you can find. And I highly recommend that you look for those, but if you're just starting out, this is for you. Specifically, we're going to be talking about three different camera settings. The three most important ones, the three basic settings that you're going to want to know about are aperture, ISO, and shutter speed. So let's talk about aperture real fast. Aperture is also known as f-stop, and that's what you'll usually see it when you see it on cameras. F and then a number, f1.4, f5.6, f.9.0, and you know anything in between. Now the good news is about aperture is you really don't have to worry about it. Just set it to something in the middle, 5.6, maybe a little bit lower if you want to get more light into the camera. But for the most part, you really don't have to worry about it. The two settings that you do need to worry about when you're taking photos is called ISO and shutter speed. So let's talk about ISO real fast. What is it? Well, basically, it's film sensitivity to light. Now, granted, most cameras these days are all digital. They're not using film anymore but it's kind of a carryover from when they were using film. They still use the same terminology because basically the concept's the same, it's just instead of film, using a sensor. What's that mean to you? It means that if you have a higher ISO, you're gonna let more light in. That's really all it means. So if you're in a darker room and you need to let more light in without using the flash, and you put in all the lights that you can, but it's still just not light enough in the camera, turn up your ISO is gonna basically make the, the, the shot brighter. Now you'll see here in these examples, I've got a couple of different shots here from different ISOs, ISO settings. And you can see basically the difference in how the photo uh, comes out depending on how the ISO setting is. Okay. Now there is one pitfall with ISO that you're probably going to fall into the more you take photos, and that's called noise. It's also referred to as grain. Okay. Let me show you. Okay, so you'll see here on this photo, let me zoom in real fast. You see all this graininess right here. That's what's referred to as noise, and that's caused because of the ISO. So there's two basic ways to fix that. You can either fix that before you take the shot by making the camera settings the correct way that they need to be, or you can do it in post. Now, I'm using Photoshop here. You don't have to use Photoshop. There's a lot of other programs that you can use, a lot of free programs even on the internet and whatnot that you can use. And they have what's called noise reduction. So if you see here, if I up the noise reduction to this, you'll see that the graininess has gone away. Now, the problem with that, <laughs> it always seems like there's more problems, aren't there? Now, the problem with that is that you'll notice that it does take away a little bit of the detail. The more noise reduction that you use, the less detail you have. But on the plus side, all these photos, when you put them into MLS, you're not going to have them quite as big as this. They're not going to be full screen photos. So you can kind of fudge it just a little bit. You can kind of play around with the numbers there and see where uh, the sweet spot is. But the better thing to do is to actually fix it while you're taking the shot. And the way to do that is to lower the ISO just a tad and enter in some more lights. The other thing you can do is apply the third setting, which is shutter speed. Now, what's shutter speed? Basically, shutter speed is how quickly the camera takes a shot. The way the shutter works is basically like a barn door. It opens up, you got a sensor back here, it opens up, lets the light in, okay, and then the sensor takes whatever light is coming through the lens and creates a photo with it in its most basic sense. Shutter speed refers to how quickly that barn door opens and closes. Now, if you've got a really fast shutter speed, really, really fast, upwards to, I mean, it can go all the way up to 4,000 and beyond on some cameras. If you've got it that fast, it's really, really fast, because this is 4,000th of a second, basically. So it's opening up really fast. It doesn't have a whole lot of time to let a whole lot of light in, and that means that the shot is gonna be a little bit darker. But this also means that it's gonna be very, very crisp, because a problem that you can run into with shutter speed is if the shutter speed is too low to let more light in and thus make the photo brighter, it can be blurry. I'll show you what I mean here. This shot was done with a lower shutter speed and it was also on a handheld. I tried to remain as steady as I could, but I just couldn't get quite get it near where I needed to. So how to fix that? Get yourself a tripod. Put it on the tripod. If you need to lower that shutter speed, 
to get more light in and make a brighter picture, put it on a tripod to make sure that it's as steady as it can be. So remember, if you have a dark area you just can't quite get enough lights into, increase the ISO, lower the shutter speed. For more tech tips or to find out some classes in your area about technology and real estate, make sure you log on to markporterlive.com. Now get out there. Don't be afraid to experiment. Thank you.